All right, so now we're going to start by downloading OBS Studio, a free program for streaming and recording. In my opinion, it's the most stable program, and it's also the least resource intensive. So it's not gonna tax your computer's resources as much as other ones like Streamlabs OBS. So first go to obsproject.com slash download and choose your operating system, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. In this course, I'm gonna demonstrate everything using Windows 10, but it all should still apply to you if you're using Mac or Linux as well. And then click Download Installer, save the file, and then we'll open it up. All right, so we'll go through this step by step. We'll click Next on the license. Now you're gonna choose your destination folder. Usually the default destination is fine. And click Finish and it'll launch. Now, if you run into an auto configuration wizard, and you probably will when you first install this, I actually recommend that since you're taking this course to just close this window rather than selecting any of these. Now, if you did, it's okay, don't worry about it, but if you have the opportunity, you can just close this. Now, don't worry if your user interface here on your first install doesn't look exactly like the one that you see on screen. I've got a couple extra things going on here, but it's okay. Some of the things that you probably do have, identical to my screen share here, is the scenes area, the bottom left, the sources area next to it. You may have an audio mixer area there. And then you've got a couple screens, or maybe you just have one screen, in which case I'll click studio mode down here, and it probably maybe looks like this. And we'll talk a little bit more about what studio mode is in a future video. The key thing that I want you to find in here is the settings. And there's two places that you can go to get in there. The first one is down here on the bottom right by clicking the settings button. And the second is by going up to file and settings. Either way, they take you to the same menu and we're gonna do a lot of stuff in here a little bit later. Now the goal of using OBS is simple. It's to assemble a bunch of sources in order to create a scene that your audience will view. And this course will teach you exactly how to do all of that. Now, when you close OBS, it will not ask you if you want to save your progress. That's because it automatically saves everything when you close it. But if you're nervous about losing your work, there's a way to still save everything. You can save your scene collection by going up to scene collection, export, and then exporting the JSON file somewhere that you're gonna to remember to find it later. Of course, if you need to import a scene collection in the future, you would go to scene collection and import. You can also create a profile which will save your settings, like your bit rates and things like that that we're gonna set in the settings menu by going to profile, export. And if you don't already have anything in here, you can create a new profile right now, give it a name and then export it. Now. If you're using Windows, I wanna give you an extra tip, and that's how to make sure that OBS Studio always runs in administrator mode when you use it. Don't ask me why this is important, but a lot of the developers say that it helps, so that's why I do it, and I'll show you how to do it. When the program is running, just right-click the icon on your taskbar, and then right-click OBS Studio, click Properties, then Compatibility, and then check the box for run this program as an administrator and apply an okay. This will make sure that every time you open OBS Studio, it's gonna ask you to say yes to running it in administrator mode. Now, hopefully you're not already overwhelmed here. And if you are, don't worry about it. I'm gonna make this easy. So in the next class, we're gonna talk about some settings that you should go ahead and set first in OBS Studio.